yes good evening welcome to gita wisdom session we are on chapter 18 the last chapter of gita title the perfection of renunciation moksha sanyasa yoga the acronym is smile let's start by my prayers to my guruji his holiness gopal krishna goswami maharaj and my guru his grace gaurulas prabhu ji we'll also start by saying prayers to krishna let us start hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare ram ram hare hare now we will uh, let, let's have a quick recap the title of the chapter or the acronym is smile and we have covered s which stands for summary of karma yoga where krishna sta- arjuna starts this chapter by asking krishna two questions he says o oh krishna please tell me what is the difference between yaga and sanyasa so krishna gives him various uh, answers from different scriptures and then says this is my final opinion and that's the final and what does he say he says sanyasa is renunciation of action which most of us are not capable of it's the highest level of uh, samadhi not all of us can even think of doing that it is tyaga is not renunciation of action but renunciation of fruits of action you can do the karma because without karma nobody can uh, live in this world but do not aspire for the fruit that is tyaga the far simpler and bruhastha or uh, uh, let's say one prastha or you no know, at whatever level it we go brahmana vaishya can also follow this easily and then he also says it is not that you don't do anything in tyaga you continue doing all the actions particularly those of importance are acts of charity austerity and penance these three he says must be performed as a matter of duty and again do not have any attachment to the results so this is what krishna explains then we studied what are the modes of nature under modes of nature krishna covers six very important topic first is gnanam knowledge action karma performer karta intelligence buddhi determination bhruti and happiness sukham all of us our karmas our desires are towards sukham and krishna tells arjuna even sukha is in the uh, under the influence of three modes so you should be very careful in choosing what kind of sukha you want by doing that particular karma today we start ideal worker where we are going to see purification through karma yoga and purification through gnana yoga the summary of what we have studied so far first four verses krishna talks about varnashrama and qualities and varnashrama is so important and a very misunderstood topic today most of us feel varna means caste as we go through we will realize it does got nothing to do with caste then krishna says it is very important that you do your duty do not try to ape someone else these are the two things that we'll be covering in the first section in the last class we studied this, where krishna ended the 40th shloka by saying uh, or describing this summary of influence of modes he says there is no being existing either here or among the demigods even demigods are under the mode of influence in the higher planetary systems which is freed from these three modes born of material nature so even shiva brahma you go to any loka they are all under the influence of modes so then the question is what do we do to come out of the influence of the three modes then krishna says i will give you a very simple solution follow varnashrama that is the starting of this third section quick recap of what is varnashrama varnashrama means varna varna can mean color varna can mean class varna means human type this is the social 
distinction in the society. And ashrama is based on age. What are the four varnas? We have Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. And it describes the qualities of each one of them going forward. And then ashrama, Brahmacharya. This is the age of studies. As a student, you maintain celibacy and you focus on gaining knowledge. Then comes the householder state where we get married and then you have your family responsibilities. Vanaprastha, where you start slowly distancing yourself from the family. And then is sannyasa, where we renounce action. So Krishna is saying, to come to the stage of sannyasa, you will have to follow Varnashrama. And Arjuna, this is the easiest way for you to overcome the influence of modes. Let's start with the first verse, where he gives us the description of Brahmana Varna. Brahmana Kshatriya Visam, Sudra Nam Chaparantapa, Karmani Pravibhaktani, Sobhava Prabhavair Gunahi. What is the translation? Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras are distinguished by the qualities born of their own natures in accordance with the material mode. O chastiser of the enemy. Parantapa means chastiser of the enemy. So this is a clear uh, definition of Varnashrama, where he's talking about the four Varnas. Now, when Krishna ended the 40th sloka and he says everything is under the influence of modes, I'll just share an example of even how the birds and animals are affected. You look at uh, cow. Cow is in the mode of uh, Satvika, mode of goodness. Whereas a lion is in the mode of passion. Amongst birds, you see swans. Swans are always in clean surroundings. You will never find a swan in dirty water. Crows are always the opposite of a swan. Wherever there is dirt, you can see a crow. So, even they are under the influence of the modes, even though they do not know how to explain it. But we can see, we can observe. And the calling card of success, the requirement for us, to progress after listening to Gita is all of us should try to migrate from passion or ignorance to mode of goodness. That is the first step. If we are able to do that, then we are doing some justice to listening to Gita. And Gita is saying, uh, Krishna has said this earlier too. I'll refer to that before we come to this sloka. Okay, before that, what is Gita? I read this very interesting thing. We all know Gita. Now, let us pronounce this reverse. It becomes Tagi. Correct? And in Sanskrit, Tagi is a person who is renouncing. And Krishna has said, what you do you renounce? You should renounce the fruits of your karma and not the karma itself. So, Gita is giving us a message. Even if you reverse Gita, it stands for Tagi. But in English, you need a Y. So then I was wondering, how do we define this why? So if you read Gita, if you understand Gita, if you want to realize the essence of Gita, you should add yourself why. What do I gain from reading Gita is I would like to become a Tyagi. I would like to renounce the fruits of action. I thought I must share this very important realization of Gita. Even in the name, there is a lesson hidden for us. In this verse, Krishna covers two things. Swabhava, uh, in addition to Varna, and Vadharma. These are very important things. Why we should follow what Krishna says, he will describe in the coming verses. And what does he say in the earlier chapters? He said, Chaturvarnim Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhagasa. According to the three modes of material nature and the work associated with them, four divisions of human society are created by me. And although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer being unchangeable. So what is important is Krishna has created Varnashrama with a purpose. It is not that it has just come on its own. And what is the purpose? We will see going forward. Let's go to the verse now. Brahmana Kshatriya Visam. Brahmana Kshatriya Visam means Visam is Vaishya. Sudra Namcha Parantapa. There are four Social divisions in the society, O Arjuna, O Parantapa, chastiser of enemies. Karmani Pravibhaktani. What is this social division based on? It is based on your karma. Nowhere it is saying, he should have said, Janmani Pravibhaktani. This comes through your birth. 
no krishna doesn't say this comes from birth he says karmani parivibhaktani and each uh, varna is distinct from the other a brahmana if he tries to be a kshatriya he is not successful and vice versa and krishna also prohibits that saying that please do not try to ape the other varna because it is not your swabhava swabhava is what we are born with swabhava prabhavai gunahi he ends this verse saying that each one of us is born with a particular character prabhava means born out of you are unique you are calling card is completely different so do not all of us live in the same uh, universe in the same material world but each human being is unique because the extent of the gunas within each one of us is different and hence what i can do is difficult for ramesha what ramesha can do is difficult for me and he is also saying o parantapa you may be the world's best archer you can uh, defeat many armies put together but still you are finding it difficult to conquer the modes now i am going to tell you how you can conquer the modes that is the hidden message in this verse let's go to this verses now here he gives us the description of a brahman now here i want to share a nice story so that you will realize this is not by birth so there was a uh, kid by name satyakam who was a child of uh, um, um, his mother's name was jabal and uh, he was born in a low class family son of a maid servant but he had a desire from his childhood days that i want to learn scriptures and i want to learn this from a reputed rishi guru so he approaches gautam rishi nearby and he says oh lord oh guru please adopt me as your student gautam rishi says can you please tell me what is your family background the child is so innocent he says i don't know my family background i don't know who my father is i'll go back to my mother ask her and tell you what is my family background see so he goes back to his mother and mother says uh, please tell guru ji that you are the servant of you are the son of a maid servant and i work in so many houses i don't know who is your father please tell him this if he is happy to accept you so be it this is your family birth story so satyakam goes and tells the same thing to gautam rishi gautam rishi says i am so glad satyakam your name is satyakam satya you speak the truth i don't care what uh, religion or what caste you are born on under you may be the son of a maid servant but what is important is your character you could have come and told me any lie you would have told someone's name and say he is my father and i had no way of verifying it but you came to me and told me the truth and i will adopt you as my student the purpose of sharing the story is there are many such stories in our scriptures where past birth make no difference to your swabhava what is important is what is your inner calling card so here with this story now we will see what are the swabhava of a brahmana to so by it's like saying uh, a doctor's son can he be a doctor no way now uncle is a doctor it doesn't mean that uh, his son can say that oh but since my father is a doctor i am a doctor cannot be you have to qualify yourself to be a doctor similarly just by being born in a brahmin family doesn't make you a uh, automatic qualifier for being a brahmana krishna says if you have any of these nine qualities or more most of these nine qualities only then the scripture will call you a brahmana and what are those nine qualities let's go to the verse tamo dama tapas tauchum chantir arjivam eva cha gnanam vignanam astikyam tamma karma swabhavajam so instead of reading this i'll go through the line by line itself samo means mind control dama is sense control why is krishna saying mind control and sense control so if you are a brahmana you should try to control your desire and you should let us say i have a desire to take a shortcut uh, maybe instead of chanting 21 rounds of gayatri mantra i will only chant 10 you should he says if you are a brahmana correct yourself tell your use your intelligence to say that i should not not do this shortcut so there is an automatic feedback mechanism which is there if you are a true brahmana tapa perform austerities saucham purity maintain cleanliness 
chanter be peaceful as a brahmana you are not a kshatriya you are not here to grind and act you are here to pray you are here to worship arjavam evacha display tolerance honesty because you have studied the scriptures pranam vignanam astikyam you have the knowledge pranam vignanam wisdom astikyam you are faith in the vedas and religiousness what do we expect from a brahmana in the society a brahmana propagates and preserves our scriptural knowledge if you want to do a puja at home or if some worship has to be offered in the temple only a brahmana is qualified to do that brahmana is a role model in the society if you can set an example by your character only then you become qualified to be called a brahmana brahma karma swabhavajam natural qual these are the natural qualities of a brahmana why is krishna highlighting this to uh, arjuna and this is for the whole of us because he says these days it has become a fashion to say that ah well i am born in a brahmin family so i become a brahmana ramesh is born in a kshatriya family he becomes a kshatriya no way this was not by caste it is not by a birth it is not a fundamental right that since i am a brahmana i become a brahmana if you have the brahman qualities you display it then only you qualify to be a brahmana in fact pralad maharaj in shrimad bhagavatam says if there are two people one who is a lover of krishna who surrenders to krishna but he comes out of a low birth he may not be a brahmana or a kshatriya he is a shudra and there is a brahmana by birth but who doesn't believe in krishna or he doesn't want to surrender to krishna he says the dog eater shudra is more pavitra than the brahmana so this is a strong message which comes out of gita and we must try to absorb this imbibe this and you know whenever we come across this argument that you know the caste system is you know what is creating the problem no caste has got nothing to do with varna this is clear message from gita let's go to the next verse now you he gives us the description of kshatriya shauryam tejo drutir dakshyam yudde chapi apalayanam danam ishwara bhavascha shatram karma swabhavajam qualities of kshatriya shauryam very easy to understand heroism why who is a kshatriya a kshatriya is a guy who is ruled by passion he is either a ruler he is a king administrator or a diplomat he is there to protect he has the power drutir tejo then drutir he has the determination any at the time of war we look forward to a kshatriya to save us dakshyam resourcefulness he is fast in decision making and execution krishna then says yudde chapi apalayanam not running away from battle courageousness there is a little bit of hint to arjuna saying that o oh arjuna please do not talk about sanyasa when you are on the battlefield be a true kshatriya you cannot run away from the battlefield then he says danam ishwara bhavascha display the leadership they have that leadership innate qualities in them ishwara bhava you have that controller and protector mentality you are the chosen lord's agent behave like one chatram karma swabhavajam this is the natural quality the work for the kshatriyas now this is an example which comes from uh, current history not uh, the scriptures there was a young boy who was born in corsica in france and uh, you know people said you are born in a small place small town why didn't you look at whatever employment is available in your place in your village but the boy was not uh, satisfied he was not you know happy looking at cows or sheep rearing he says i will get i will go and get the job which is of my liking he go, he went, he goes to uh, paris and then he becomes the greatest war general the world has ever known and that is napoleon bonaparte so that is the inner calling card you will do what is your character you cannot hide that so krishna says remember this and follow this principle we go to the next one here he gives us an example of or what are the qualities of a vaishya and a shudra krishi go raksha vanijyam vaishya karma swabhavajam paricharayatmakam karma shudra shyasvi swabhavajam qualities of a vaishya quite easy to understand krishi go raksha vanijyam they are involved in trade they are involved in farming they are looking after cows cow protection and business the biggest example of a krishi goraksha vaishya is 
Krishna's father himself, Vasudeva. He had nine lakh cows. So we have this innate tendency to look after animals, particularly cows, and they have that innate ability to get into business and create wealth. That is their calling card. That is their aptitude. Vaishya karma sabhavajam. Above our natural work for the Vaishyas. What is the calling card of a Chudra? He says, Paricharyatmakam karma. They are good at physical labor serving others. Chudras yapi spabhavajam. They are the natural qualities of work for the Shudras. And there is no dignity of labor. Each one of us are capable, are governed, uh, have that innate skill within us and we have to follow that path. If I ask a Shudra to be a Brahmana or a vice versa, it is not going to work. And Krishna says, please do not try to do that. Quick recap. So, Brahmana is a person who deals with ideas, driven strongly by Satvaguna, followed by Rajaguna. Kshatriya is a person who is driven by passion, Rajoguna, followed by Satvaguna. Vaishya is driven by Rajoguna. He wants profits. He wants to create wealth and Tamoguna. Shudra is, you know, he person deals with things. He's predominantly lazy. Uh, he, he is good at physical labor. Let's move to the next part. Now we start the Karma Yoga part. So what is Karma Yoga? It is not about giving up the Karma. You have to only give up the fruits of Karma. So this is Karma. Krishna is saying, if you want to do Karma Yoga, give up the desire for recognition, reward, and the fun. Whatever you do, do not desire something in return. That is left to Krishna's mercy. So don't expect happiness from karma phala. I planted a seed and it became a plant. Fine. Or a tree. If it, if it doesn't grow into a tree, so be it. The, the happiness for the karma yogi comes from the fact that he planted a seed. Whether it grew to be a tree or not is second part. So this is what we should try to understand from Karma Yoga. A very important section of this uh, chapter. Sve Sve Karmani Abhirataha Tam Siddhim Labate Naraha Tva Karma Nirata Siddhim Yata Vindati Plakshunu Everyone can become perfect. So Krishna is now giving us the hope in life. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter where you come from doesn't matter what your family background is. It doesn't matter what your social status is. It doesn't matter what your educational background is. It doesn't matter what is your economical status. All that matters is what is your desire? What is that you want to become? And how you want to become? Choose the right path. By doing whatever you have as a blessing within you. By following his qualities of work. Krishna is not defining any particular work, any work, all work is equal. Every man can become perfect. So it is hope-giving statement. There is no difference between a Brahmana or a Kshatriya. Now please hear from me how this can be done. So it's very easy to define. Krishna now gives an example. He says, I'm not just defining this because I want to share this knowledge. I'm also going to give you the right example as to how do we do it. Sve Sve Karmani. Do your own job. And how do you do your job? You should do it with passion. It says, it is said, it is not enough to be passionate. You have to be obsessed with your job. Whatever may be the job, if you can bring that kind of obsession, there is nothing which can stop you from success. That is avirataha. You are absorbed in your chosen field of work. Samsiddhim labate naraha. You can attain perfection. Now, we may be wondering, why is Krishna talking about perfection in the 18th chapter? Not so. He already talked about perfection in the 8th chapter, 15th verse. He says, Maam upetya punar jalma dhukkalaya masha sutam napnuvanti mahatmanaha samsiddhim paramam gataha. So he has already told us what is samsiddhim. He says, after attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion, never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. So Krishna has said earlier itself that you can achieve me by doing your own work. Then he says, Swakarma Nirataha, be devoted to your own duty and that is what gives you Siddhi. That is what gives you success. 
yathavindati tashrunu how to achieve that success hear from me tashrunu is hear from me this is what he says in this verse let's move to the next verse yata pravrutir bhutanam yena sarvam idam tatam swakarmana tam abhyarcha siddhim vindati manavah everyone can become perfect so this is the underlying message i worship of the lord who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading a man can attain perfection through performing his own work so it makes it so simple you know we i don't know why we are anxious why should we compare ourselves with others krishna has never said that try to look at what the other guy has and then you decide what you should do with what you have the simple story is do what you can do the best you can with what you have with whatever you have now as we go through this there is an uh, innate linkage interlinkage in gita and if we are able to connect back we start understanding how krishna is reinforcing the message he has already shared earlier why is he saying this yata pravrutir bhutanam so first we have to go back to our identity what did krishna say he says in 15th chapter 7th verse he give, defines our identity and that identity defines our purpose in life he says mamai vamsha jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatanah the living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts we are not somebody left adrift helpless in this in this world he says you are part of me realize that due to conditioned life because of the modes they are struggling very hard with the six senses which include the mind so if you want to limit yourself trying to do what you can only with the material uh, senses that you have so be it if you can step out step away from that and look beyond you will realize the purpose of life and then he says sorry <clears throat> yata pravrutir bhutanam so we have started with the identity why is krishna saying this so we are the lord is the source of all living beings that is what is the meaning of yata pravrutir bhutanam so we are part and parcel of the lord first fact and then krishna has also told us earlier and he is only revising revising this now in the earlier chapter in the 10th chapter he had said aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarva pravartate matta sarvam pravartate i am the source of all spiritual and material worlds what more do you want we are under his shelter everything emanates from me the wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts so he says don't really worry too much about what is going to happen to me because i am here to look after you yena sarvam idam tatam who is all pervading he has mentioned this in the earlier 10th chapter 8th verse that we saw swakarmanatam abhyarcha translate your work into worship most important uh, distinction here has to be made here we all are familiar with the statement work is worship but that is not what is the true fact krishna has not said work is worship it is a uh, 20th century improvement he only says only work is worship whatever you do any ritual make it spiritual that is the essence of karma yoga he says translate your work into worship siddhim vindati manavah then you can attain perfection so this is a very important verse where he says you are part and parcel of me i am all pervading i am the source of this entire universe entire creation to so offer all your work unto me let's go to the next verse again a very important verse and this is one of those verse there are two verses in gita which is repeated twice so this is one of them let's go through this carefully treyan swadharmo vigunah paradharma swa anushtita swabhava niyatam karma purva napnoti kil bisam it's better to do one's own duties and he is reinforcing this message let us see what he had said earlier and then we'll go to the translation he says you remember see this in third chapter 35th verse he has used the same two lines 
क्रियान स्वधर्मो विगुण परधर्मा स्व अनुष्ठिता एनी गोज ऑन टू से स्वधर्मे निधनम श्रेया परधर्मो भयाव फार बेटर टू डिस्चार्ज वन प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटी even though faultily than others duty is perfectly destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duty for to follow another's path is dangerous and why is this message to arjuna because arjuna from the beginning has been having this strong opinion that i don't want war i don't want this bloodshed why don't i renounce all these things i'll go back to the forest and worship you krishna says that is not the way you cannot perform sanyasa because you are not a qualified uh, jeeva for that only if you go through all these steps that i am going to now define then you can come to the stage of sanyasa what are the steps we will see going forward so what is the translation here he says it is better to engage in one's own occupation even though one may perform it imperfectly so do not worry about failure than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly you may be very good in doing kshatriya karma plus but please do not do this duties prescribed according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions very very important verse and you know it has great essence what he says he says priyan swadharmo vigunaha vigunaha means fault so we may have faults in our duty in fact in the next few verses he will tell us there is no work which is perfect there will be faults you must accept it tolerate it and continue delivering it it is like saying kshatriya cannot be violent like what arjuna is trying to say i don't want to kill i don't want bloodshed it is not possible because his overall dharma is to protect so for diplomacy sake he cannot say i will avoid bloodshed that is the essence swadharma priyan swadharma vigunaha there is a fault of being you know there could be violence bloodshed etc but as a kshatriya you must fight there is no alternate to that paradharma tva anusthita do not try to say i want to be a sanyasa because that looks easy that is fitting my definition of being peaceful no violence no bloodshed he says no it is not allowed it is not possible you will not Uh, succeed and now you may be wondering why does krishna say this imagine if arjuna were to really retire to the forest and he sits there for meditation and imagine a tiger or a fox comes there because it's a forest and they they, they don't know that arjuna is the greatest archer and they you know they try to create some nuisance you know what uh, arjuna will do he will pick up his bow and arrow and kill them because he is fearless that is his swadharma swakarma whereas if there are let's say a brahmana goes to the forest and meditates he is not fit to face a tiger or a lion or a fox he will look at them and run for his life so krishna says please understand you will end up going creating more sinful reactions for your, yourself if you retire to the forest you will not be able to meditate now there are next uh, swabhava niyatam karma what is this it says your karma is as per so first is you are born with a particular trait character and do your karma in line with that now you may be wondering okay one example of arjuna fine he was to fight he did not want to fight can you give me more examples to drive home this fact i can give two examples first is ekalavya another famous figure of mahabharata what did ekalavya do he was not born kshatriya but he went to dronacharya he says please teach me the art of warfare dronacharya refused what did eklavya do paradharma swa anusthita he he was not a kshatriya but he wanted to be aping a kshatriya he kept an idol in front of him he did great work and he says no krishna says i am not saying that you know you are not capable of becoming a kshatriya but ultimately please understand what is the end result dronacharya when he goes and tells dronacharya oh lord i have you know learned the art and i have mastered the art i thank you for helping me dronacharya says please cut your thumb and give it to me as guru dakshina what did he achieve paradharma swanshita it may look easy it may look you may be excellent in doing it please don't do that another example karna karna was a brahmana a kshatriya and she had a desire to learn warfare or you know archery art from parshuram 
Parshurama was a Brahmin, Brahmana, and Parshurama hated Kshatriyas. But Karna was very, you know, he's a Kshatriya, he's determined. He went and said, no, I'm not, I'm not a Kshatriya, I'm a Brahmana, you please teach me. So lying comes naturally to a Kshatriya. So Parshuram believes him. And then he starts teaching the art of warfare. One day, Parshuram is quite an old man. He got tired and then he started, he wanted to rest. So Karna offered his lap and Parshuram goes to sleep. And then there is a bee which comes and starts troubling Karna. It bites him and then it drills a hole and there is a lot of blood coming out. And Karna bites his lips and manages the pain and says, I will not disturb my guru. Look at his uh, attitude, his character. Paradharma Swanustitat. He is willing to undergo the pain not to disturb his guru. So there is nothing wrong in the logic, nothing wrong in his character. But what does Krishna say? Swabhavan Yatam Karma. You are not doing your duty, but you are trying to do someone else's duty perfectly. What happened? Uh, Parashurama gets up, he looks at what has happened and he says, Oh Karna, I am too old in this trade. I can recognize a Kshatriya from very far. You are not a Brahmana. You have lied to me. I like your uh, you know, uh, surrender that you wanted to allow me to sleep in peace, but you have violated my promise. I had said I will not teach this to a Kshatriya, but you came and heated me by saying I am a Brahmana. I know that you have done great sacrifice for my good benefit, but I still have to curse you because you lied to me. So this is what happens. Swabhava niyat karma. Do what you are born with. Do not try to do something else other than yours. Kurvan napnoti kilbisam. You will not be affected by sinful reactions. It is like a judge. Judge pronounces a capital punishment. Will he get a sinful reaction for that? No. He is upholding the law. So for upholding the law, for upholding dharma, if you do your job, your karma, Purvam Napnoti Kilpisam. You will not get sinful reactions. Going further. Sahajam Karma Kaunteya Sadosham Apina Chaje Sarvarambahi Doshena Dhume Nagne Rivavrata. What a fantastic example Krishna is giving now. He says, Why you should do your own duty? He says, Every endeavor is covered by some fault. Just as fire is covered by smoke. Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature, O son of Kunti, even if such work is full of fault. So Krishna is now saying, Sahajam karma kaunte. Yeah, do not give up the work which is true to your nature. I know and I am giving you an open declaration that every karma is definitely having a fault. If you are a Brahmana, if you are a Kshatriya, don't think that your Varna is perfect. Kshatriya has to kill. A Kshatriya has to lie. A Vaishya has to lie if he has to make profits. So he cannot say that, you know, I have, I'm not doing any adulteration in my business. He cannot tell the truth. If he doesn't do adulteration, he cannot make profits. If he doesn't make, make profits, he will not become wealthy. So every Varna has a fault. So that is the uh, we should understand, don't try to be perfect because this nature is not perfect. Every karma has some defect. Sadosham apinatejet. Why is this defect, default or defect? It is coming because of the three modes. So be conscious of that. So whatever action you do, whichever varna you are born in, you will be surrounded by fault. So you will do some mistake. It is part and parcel of the game. Do not worry. And if you think that, you know, oh, why is this happening only to me? Why is the my Varna giving me this trouble? Like Arjuna is saying, oh, why should I fight? Why should I kill my own relatives? The same questions will come back to us in each Varna in a different way. Life is, is going to present us with that challenges. He says, Dhume Nagni Ivavratha. He says, please remember, fire is covered by smoke. Without fire, there is no cooking. Without cooking, there is no life. But if you have to light a fire, there will be smoke and that smoke has to be tolerated. Tolerate your faults and continue to do your karma. That is the essence of this verse. Now we go to the second part of this. Reaction-free work through Gnana Yoga. We come to the Brahman platform. 
and brahman platform leads us to pure bhakti and krishna is now giving a direct answer to the question of arjuna how can i be a sanyasa what is the difference between sanyasa and tyaga this is what his question was and now he says in the next verses he says if you do all these things you can reach the brahman platform then you are qualified to be sanyasa and in 6.3 he has already defined two stages of uh, sanyasa he says for one who is a neophyte like all of us who are beginners in this ashtanga yoga system work is said to be the means only karma we you know we have to be conscious that we are a sadhaka we cannot go to the level of renouncing the actions but he says and for one who is already elevated in yoga yoga rudasya tasya eva cessation of all material activities is said to be the means so arjuna if you really want to qualify yourself to be a sanyasa understand what does it take so how this world works is in karma we are or in karma yoga as a sadhaka we are after recognition we are after reward yes all of us start at the stage we have to move we have to move to reflection is this the only purpose in my life then you will have to reach the stage of realization if reflection starts then that is the first step towards realization let's go to the next words like four verses are a gnana sadhaka uh, first what all you have to do to come to the level of uh, sanyas where you can say that from tomorrow i am not bothered by doing any action just imagine this then you will say oh my goodness is it so difficult it is it is not easy asakta buddhi sarvatra hitatma vigata spruha naishkarme siddhim paramam sanyasena adigachyati the answer to Chris arjuna's question is there in the 49th verse of 18th chapter he says oh arjuna do all these things you can become a sanyasi and what is that now let us go through this it looks so simple four lines it will take many lifetimes to achieve even one of them translation he says one who is self controlled and unattached and who disregards all material enjoyments can obtain by practice of renunciation the highest perfect stage of freedom from reaction so i have underlined three things if we are able to achieve in our lifetime we are qualified to be a sanyasa the question is will one lifetime be sufficient what does krishna say what are the requirements he says asakta buddhi your intelligence should be unattached it should have no likes it should have no dislike sarvatra toward all living beings when i was a kid and i used to try to read some spiritual articles one thing i used to get stuck up was be shankaracharya ramanujacharya all great sages they used to say there is no difference between a man and a dog i used to wonder how can there be no difference between a dog and a man but i never got the answer only when i started studying gita i realized what krishna is saying he says there is actually there is no difference between any living being in this world there is no difference between a dog and a uh, or a dog cat mouse and a man the only difference is the body and where is this body coming from because of our karma that's it internally we are all jivatmas so he says sarvatra realize towards all being all living being jitatma control on the mind now i will be showing in the next slide how difficult it is to control your mind if it were to be so easy then all of us would have become sanyasis we get a spruha then he says the third step o oh arjuna be free from material desires then you can think of naishkarmya siddhim paramam no action at all and you are perfectly happy that is the stage of sanyasi sanyasena adigachati one attains the renounced order of life now this is going through the definition now let us understand what does it really take krishna has given us three steps and he says climb the three steps and you will become a sanyasi so let us start with the first one what are desires desires are children of ignorance why do we have desires because we are ignorant and how do we remove a desires by removing ignorance how do you remove ignorance by studying scriptures what does desire lead to the thoughts arise from desires today is hot summer day i want to eat an ice cream so what do i do i go and buy an ice cream so desire to eat resulted in a thought 
that ice cream is the most pleasurable uh, joy in this weather. And I start, this is the thought, and then I make an ice. I buy an ice cream and eat it. So this is how, this is the stepwise process of what happens within each one of us. And now imagine Krishna is saying, Asakta Buddha Sarvatra, unattached intelligence. So why is Krishna saying control your intelligence? Because intelligence is the one which is telling me if I eat an ice cream, I will have the joy of beating this hot temperature. What is the element that intelligence always highlights is enjoyment, joy. And that is the false ego path element. I am the enjoyer. Actually, you are not the enjoyer. That is why Krishna is saying, please control and make your intelligence aware that I am not the enjoyer. Gita Atma, control on the mind. You subdue your ego. Easier said than done. Because what is the problem with the mind? Mind always says, I am the doer. So mind and intelligence play Vivalbandi. Intelligence says, I am the enjoyer. Give me this, you will be happy. And the mind says, oh fine, you want this, I will give you this. And we have to step out of this chain reaction. Only then we can qualify for becoming a sannyasi. And then he says, we get us through, ah, free from material desires. So this is the three-step process. If you are able to and imagine, Krishna is not giving us a formula which is as complicated as E is equal to MC squared. It is not algebra. It is not uh, any complicated equation that we all learn. And for uncle, it's not an eye surgery. It is simple. Three steps. But if you have to do even one of them perfectly, it may take you years or many lifetimes. Let us be honest with each other. And that's why Krishna is saying, sannyasa is not meant for all. And this desire, Krishna gives a wonderful example. I have a chat message. Okay, uncle is it. Okay, uncle, fine. He has defined this verse. He says, Apuryamanam achala pratistam samudram apaparvishyanti yadvat. This is one of the best examples that Krishna gives for desire. He says, the person who is not disturbed by the incessant, incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. So if you can understand, even in nature, Krishna is giving you an example, be like an ocean. There are many rivers which comes into the ocean, but the ocean remains still. We should also have that maturity. Many desires come, but do not try to fulfill all the desires. Try to fulfill the desire of surrendering to Krishna, of doing service to Krishna, at least keep saying that I want to do it. There will be a day when you will start getting into that mode. Let's move to the next verse. Siddhim praptu yata brahma tata pnoti nibodame samasena iva kaunteya vistagranasya yapara. Krishna continues, what does it take to be a perfect sannyasi? He says, O son of Kunti, learn from me how one who has achieved this perfection can attain to the supreme perfectional stage, Brahman, Yatha Brahma, Tata Apnoti, the stage of highest knowledge by acting in the way I shall now come arise. Siddhim Prapto Yatha Brahma. If you are able to achieve Siddhi by doing your one, by doing your own duty, as Krishna has told, you will become a Karma Yogi. Then your intellect is free, your mind and free, my mind and body is under your control. You are fit to be a student of meditation. If you are Siddhim Prapto Yata Brahma, so you have started uh, renouncing or controlling your mind, controlling your intelligence, like what we have studied in the last verse. If you do that, you are going to achieve Siddhim. He says, Tata Apnoti Niboda Me. Boda means understand. Niboda means understand from me. That's why he says Niboda Me. So, if you are able to remove, uh, take out this, uh, control your intelligence and mind, your ignorance is removed. I have told you this in detail throughout the earlier chapters. Now, I am going to give you a gist. He says, Samasena Iva Kaunteya. 18th chapter is not a teaching chapter. 18th chapter is a reminding chapter. So, I will teach you in brief. Mr. Gnanatya Yapara. This is the highest stage of Gnana, O Arjuna. Try to understand this from me. And why is he saying Mr. Gnanasya Yapara is in this nine four path, nine fold path, 
of devotion it is the fifth stage only when you come to nista does a person become steady after that he is not going to go back into any of this he can only look forward to that is why krishna is saying come to this stage come to this stage then you will go into ruchi asakti bhava and prema that is the last stage so at least till nista we have to do all these things control your intelligence control your body and mind now in the next three verses krishna gives all these three verses are together in gita but i have split them just to understand the essence of each one of them and he says if you are able to do these three you will come to the stage of brahma bhuta perfection in knowledge let's go through this one by one buddhya visuddhaya yukto rutyamananam niyamya cha sabdadin visiyam stakva ragadesha vidushya cha translation being purified by this intelligence and controlling the mind with determination giving up the objects of sense gratification being freed from attachment and hatred it looks like a perfect script for bliss and that is what krishna is giving arjuna if you can do all of this or most of this you will have your desire fulfilled of becoming a sanyasi what are those now he is giving the details buddhya vidya ikto intellect purified what does it mean how do you purify do not chase joy hunting tendencies give it up you have five sense objects you look at something beautiful you want to possess that you hear something a nice in terms of music you want to hear that again and again he says try to control your intellect vidya mananam niyamya cha control your mind and senses with determination it is not easy sabda din visayam stekva give up the objects of sense gratification i mentioned there are five sense objects only five sense objects which will lead us astray what is that shabda sound sparsha touch rupa form rasa taste ganda smell so if you are able to control your mind and intelligence from going behind this you have achieved what you want to achieve raga dvesho vidushya cha mind is freed from attachment and hatred and why did he start giving us all these things he says how to come out of the influence of the three modes follow varnashrama follow gnana sadhana do karma yoga you will come to the stage and why is krishna again and again giving this loud message control your intelligence control your mind because he has already told us sense says mind intelligence are sitting places of lust lust is not just about sex desire lust is about anything that you are greedy for that is lust and krishna says very clearly indriyani manobhidvir syadisthanam uchyate the senses mind and the intelligence are the sitting places of this lust through them lust covers the real knowledge of the living entity and bewilders him so if you are able to cover this three or control this three your lust tendencies of you know the greediness for having more and more reduces he says evam buddhe param bhudva samsthabhyanam atmanam thus knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses mind and intelligence know what you are it is within your capability oh mighty arm darjana one should study the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence we cannot control our mind by thinking of ice cream rasgulla smoking cigarette drinking no all that will only give you nirvana for half an hour one hour and then you are back to more misery that is krishna consciousness and thus by spiritual strength control this insatiable enemy known as lust go to the next verse this is like a doctor prescription Uh, you know if i go to a doctor and say i have diabetes he gives me a prescription says you follow this diet in the in the morning you can only eat only so much you can do only this you should do this exercise you should walk so much it's like that it's a prescription of what all we need to do to come to the stage of perfection of knowledge vivikta sevi lagvasi yata va kaya manasa dhyana yoga paro nityam vairagyam samupashrita if you do this you will come to the level of perfect knowledge one who lives in a secluded place who eats little who controls his body mind and power of speech who is always in trance and who is detached samupashtita how vivikta sevi now he is trying to say choose your external environment wisely 
you cannot go to sleep in a market place similarly he says you cannot control your mind and intelligence you cannot do gnan sadhana sadhana by being in a crowded place he says choose your place vivikta sevi try and live in a secluded place it's like a child wanting to study can he study in the uh, kitchen with so many uh, sounds uh, you know flavor of dishes being cooked no go to a room sit there tightly and study seriously like a scientist wants to invent something he has to go and find a quiet place so he says if you want to meditate find a solitude find a secluded place be in solitude lagwa means minimum asi means eat control your eating because your senses are impacted by what food and how much food we eat yata va kaya manasa control your body mind and power of speech speak only if it is required dhyana yoga paro nityam you absorb yourself in meditation and it is not i do it one day i do it two days oh i have done it for two weeks now i have done it for four months now no nityam paro nityam throughout our life this is a journey if i have to control my mind and intelligence i cannot do it sitting in the in dhyana for one day for one hour and say oh i have done my chanting today i must now become free from all material desires it doesn't work that way he says dhyana yoga paro nityam practice dhyana always vairagyam samupashrita take shelter of detachment detach yourself from this worldly things including relationships that is why varnashrama in ashrama stage you have one prastha after 50 60 you should be stepping away from the family hand over your responsibilities to the next your son your daughter and try to say that i will start reading more and more of gita i will find the time to read gita and understand be dispassionate going further he has told about the external environment now he is going to talk about internal things what we have got as faults ahankaram balam darpam kamam krodham parigraham vimuchya nirmama santo brahma bhuyaya kalpate control all the things which are within you free from false ego false strength false pride lust anger and acceptance of material things free from proprietorship false proprietorship and peaceful such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self realization so here krishna is highlighting the feeling of proprietorship it's like you know there was a sadhu who travel traveling uh, through that town he goes to the king's palace and say can i take rest here and the security guard says oh my dear sir do you know that this is a palace he says oh well 10 years back when i was passing through there was another king who used to live here so this is the guest house today this king is there tomorrow another king will be there so what difference does it make allow me to take rest this is knowledge all that we think is ours is only ours for a limited period of time this is going to pass away into someone else's hand when we leave this world ahankaram free from false ego balam false strength darpam false pride however strong you are however i you know you may be the greatest uh, maybe you are an ambani or an adani you know you are blessed with all the world's riches but that riches also has a shelf life so do not have that false pride you have that wealth be happy but do not say that you know i can conquer the world you cannot that is going to pass away from you sooner than later control all these feelings which are coming to you from the mind amam krodham free from lust anger parigraham possession of material things minimize try to reduce your material possessions as you progress in varnashrama vimuchya nirmama santo what do you gain by doing this you will have freedom from false proprietorship as long as you know what is mine today is going to be someone else's tomorrow you are not going to be so much attached to that property or wealth then you start becoming peaceful ram bhuyaya kalpate that is the stage of perfection you will achieve you are achieved you are reaching the stage of self realization where you are disidentifying yourself from ahankara you are never going to say again i am the doer i am the enjoyer you are only going to say i am the servant mamai vamsha jeeva loke i am the part and parcel of krishna and what is my job i will want to serve krishna what is the uh, benefit of serving krishna i sacrifice my ego if you have to service if you have to offer service you have to surrender your ego it's like you know if you go to golden temple in amritsar 
the world, the biggest, the richest man in the town is standing at the shoe stall, waiting to take the shoes and keep it in the shoe stand. Why does he do it? Because he wants to remind himself that ultimately I am nothing but a servant. I am here to serve. That is the eternal message. Whether you are in Golden Temple or whether you are in Tirupati, it doesn't matter. If you are in Gnana, Gnana Sadhana, you should realize that all that I think is mine is only an illusion. And the only truth is I belong to the Lord and I have to serve Him. So Krishna had given this message in 14.26. He says, Maam Chavyo Avya Bichare Na Bhakti Yoga Na Sevate. He says, one who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances, at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman. So there are three realizations for us to progress in life. Brahman is the first day. Imagine to come to the level of Brahman, you will have to go through all this process. Localized is Paramatma. That is the next stage of Gnana Yoga. Then comes Bhagwan. Bhagwan is easier. I have given you this comparison. Sorry, it is coming here. Then we'll go to this verse. Now we have studied these three verses. It is like a ladder. If you do all the things, you will reach Brahma Bhujaya Kalpate. When I was a kid, I used to read this, you know, very famous statement. Why take stairs when escalator is available? It is so true of philosophy too. You do all this, control your intelligence, control your mind, live in a solitude, control your eating, meditate, give a false ego, etc., etc. You will reach the level of perfection. Here, all that you have to do is, Oh Lord, I surrender into you. I am part of you. I want to serve you. So that is the difference between the two. Here, you are taking help of Krishna to help you. There, you are trying to do everything on your own. That is the difference. Krishna says it is your choice. We come to the next verse. Here he says, Brahma Bhuya, Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma, Na Sochati, Na Kangshati, Samasarveshu Bhuteshu, Mad Bhaktim Labate Param. So by reaching this stage, what are you going to get? One who is thus transcendently situated at once realizes the Supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments or desires to have anything. He is equally disposed towards every living entity. In that state, he attains pure devotional service unto me. What a powerful verse. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma, one who is on the Brahman platform. And who is on the Brahman platform? We have studied the three verses, 51 to 53, experiences inner peacefulness. Now, this is, this, this is not joy. When I have an ice cream on a hot summer day, that is joy. When I am saying Prasannatma, you are getting into the stage of Satchidananda. My joy is not linked to whether I get an ice cream, whether I get a promotion. No. My joy is coming from internal bliss. That is why Krishna says Brahma Bhutta Prasannatma. Na Sochati, Na Kangshati. If there are two powerful words in Gita, if we have to tell anyone, oh, what is the summary of Gita? Give it to me in two words. You can say consciously, confidently. Na Sochati, Na Kangshati. Don't grieve for what you don't have. Don't lament for what you don't have. So, I am not as intelligent as Ramesha. It doesn't matter. He, uh, Ramesha is more intelligent because he is gifted. So, don't grieve. Ramesha is a rich man. Don't envy him. Don't lament. Oh, if only I were to be that rich as Ramesha, I would have been a billionaire. No. He says, if you do these two things, you are going to step into a, uh, a pool of misery from where you cannot extricate yourself. Na sochati, na kangshati. Tama sarveshu bhuteshu. Equally disposed towards every living entity. Ramesha may be rich, Ramesha may be intelligent. It doesn't matter. What matters is how I can be a friend with Ramesha. Equipoised towards every living entity. <laughs> When you have this equanimity, you attain pure devotional service unto me because you have stopped thinking as I, I am the doer, I am the enjoyer. For you, for you start seeing the Lord and enjoying his creation. And Krishna has told this also earlier. So in 18th chapter, whatever he has said, you will find a reference to that. We have to link it up. In 5.18, he says, the humble stages by virtue of true knowledge, he with equal vision, a learned and a gentle brahmana, cow, elephant, dog, and dog eater, 
equally. There is no difference between any of us if that is the ultimate stage of knowledge. The last words of today. Bhaktiya maam abhijanati yavan yas chasmi tattvataha tato maam tattvato gnatva visite tvadhanantaram By bhakti one can know Krishna and attain his abode. He says, it is so simple. One can understand me as I am, as the supreme personality of Godhead. And you can come to this understanding only by devotional service. None of your intelligence, wealth, whatever you are, doesn't count. The only currency which works to understand Krishna is devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of me by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. It is so simple, Bhakti Yoga. Bhaktiya maam abhijanati. With bhakti, devotional service, you know me. What is devotional service? You require sacrifice. You have to sacrifice what? Krishna is not asking you to sacrifice your wealth, your knowledge, your intelligence. No. He's just saying sacrifice your ego. Realize that I am, you are part of me. Then surrender unto me. You can surrender only if you are able to overcome your ego. If, uh, you know, when we were child, if they said you go and offer obeisances to an elder visiting home, we used to look at our parents, oh, should we really do it? Why should I offer obeisances to this elder? But now I realize, whenever you bow down, you are sacrificing your ego. Why do you offer namaskara when you go to temple? Because you are surrendering your ego to the Lord. Yavan, limitless. He says, understand me as I am. Yas chas me. Do not try to de uh, define, describe. No, do not put your material intelligence to tell me how I am. Just understand what I am telling you. That is the truth. Only if you understand this, then you have understood Gita. Tatvataha. That is the truth. You cannot debate. You cannot challenge. You cannot discuss. Because this truth is absolute. Tato maam tatvato gnatva. Only then you will know me fully in truth. And you will know me in truth only if you are fully conscious of me. There are many people who are who read Gita and then come back with the question that, oh, if only I could see Krishna in front of me, I would be doing everything that he had asked me to do. It is like saying after Ramayana, what was the relationship between Rama and Sita? Krishna says, remove this I. Remove this great intelligence that you have. They are all good for your material platform. They mean nothing on the spiritual platform. Only if you leave your ego behind, you can enter into the spiritual world, kingdom of God. <clears throat> and he said this earlier in 4th chapter, ninth verse. Most important verse of Gita. He says, Janma karma chame divyam evam yo veti tattvataha. Whenever he uses the word tattvataha, that is the absolute. That is the truth. There is no other argument against that. Yaktva deham punar janma naiti maam eti su arjuna. He says, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance, that is tattvataha. No Krishna as he is. And activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. That is how we can attain Krishna. That is what Krishna is saying. Now, Hare, I am seeing Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining. Now, Ramesha, Shall we play the yeah, video? Yeah, yeah. Uh, video torsla? Yeah, no, Okay. Is an illicando. Chapter 18 Conclusion The Perfection of Renunciation Arjuna said, O oh my goodness. 
that happiness which is derived from contact of the senses with their objects and which appear like nectar at first but poison at the end is said to be of the nature of passion and that happiness which is blind to self-realization which is delusion from beginning to end and which arises from sleep laziness and illusion is said to be of the nature of ignorance there is no being existing either here or among the demigods in the higher planetary systems which is freed from these modes born of material nature brahmanas chatriyas vaishyas and shudras are distinguished by the qualities born of their own natures in accordance with the material modes o chastiser of the enemy peacefulness self-control austerity purity tolerance honesty knowledge wisdom and religiousness these are the natural qualities by which the brahmanas work heroism power determination resourcefulness courage in battle generosity and leadership are the natural qualities of work for the chatriyas farming cow protection and business are the natural work for the vaishyas and for the shudras there is labor and service to others by following his qualities of work every man can become perfect now please hear from me how this can be done by worship of the lord who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading a man can attain perfection through performing his own work it is better to engage in one's own occupation even though one may perform it imperfectly than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly duties prescribed according to one's nature are never affected by sinful reactions every endeavor is covered by some fault just as a fire is covered by smoke therefore one should not give up the work born of his nature o son of kunti even if such work is full of fault one who is self-controlled and unattached and who disregards all material enjoyments can obtain by practice of renunciation the highest perfect stage of freedom from reaction o son of kunti learn from me how one who has achieved this perfection can attain to the supreme perfectional stage brahman the stage of highest knowledge by acting in the way i shall now summarize being purified by his intelligence and controlling the mind with determination giving up the objects of sense gratification being freed from attachment and hatred one who lives in a secluded place who eats little who controls his body mind and power of speech who is always in trance and who is detached free from false ego false strength false pride lust anger and acceptance of material things free from false proprietorship and peaceful such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self-realization one who is thus transcendentally situated at once realizes the supreme brahman and becomes fully joyful he never laments or desires to have anything he is equally disposed toward every living entity in that state he attains pure devotional service unto me one can understand me as i am as the supreme personality of godhead only by devotional service and when one is in full consciousness of me by such devotion he can enter into the kingdom of god though engaged in all kinds of activities my pure devotee under my protection reaches the eternal imperishable abode by my grace in all activities just depend upon me and work all and in voice bartaela mute alli diya nenu hin kelsata aiva kelsa perfect any questions please please feel free na onde yen andre nin helida na for an birthday from ora birthday ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮ 
ಇವಾಗ ಸಿ ವೈ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಜನರಲಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಡೂ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಹಿ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ಮೆಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಇನ್ ವಾರ್ಫೇರ್ ವಾರ್ಫೇರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಟಜಿ ವಾರ್ಫೇರ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಯು ಜನರಲಿ ಇವಾಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ನೀನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ಗಿವ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಟು ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಮೇಕ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿ <laughs> my uh, swadharma is coming from birth a doctor son is not a doctor butcher son is not a butcher he is born in a butcher's family but what he is going to be he is dependent on what is his karma and what is his dharma if not it was very easy isn't it all of us are born in some family and you know we will do what our father used to do or grandfather used to do does it happen no my grandfather was a teacher my maternal grandfather was a police inspector and neither i am a police inspector nor i am a teacher i am an engineer so why did i become an engineer because i chose my swadharma depending on what i think i am good at so it leads you to that and i was very clear i don't want to be a doc- i could have become a doctor i am a science student why not a doctor why but i was very clear i am afraid of blood so i cannot be a doctor so it is guiding you internally listen to that now if at all i had overridden my uh, instinct saying that no i am i am afraid of blood but i don't mind i will become a doctor then i am not living true to my varna what i am internally blessed with is not to be a doctor i am internally blessed with to be an engineer does it answer your question okay ramesh hai 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 sneha any other questions no no questions okay fine thank you very much enjoy the rest of your sunday evening hare krishna ramesh hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna